Hello, hello. It's a crafting stream. Trying this for the first time with a brand new setup. Uh, since everything's new, I don't know how everything's working. So please let me know if you're having any issues with audio. I won't be playing any music this stream, so you can listen to your own in the background. Uh, I'll be listening to my own as well. Um, so I'm just going to try and build stuff that uh, I have to do at the moment. Um, right now, I'm working on the... Um, Japanese battleship Congo. You can see her there. Um, I'll be uh, not good for this camera angle, but um, you can see it on this camera angle. Uh, so at the moment, I've got the deck put on and I've painted that. It's a wooden deck. And I'm going to be um, putting a whole bunch of uh, little bits and pieces on there, uh, hatches and ammo boxes and stuff like that. So I need to make all those up. And I figured that would be a good thing to do for a, uh, a test craft stream. Uh, just make up a few small items and um, they'll all need to be made before they are painted and then glued onto the deck. And I wanted to do all that before I started sticking the uh, main structure onto the deck because I don't want to, you know, move my hands around it and bump into it. Uh, g'day, Kami. Nice to see you there, mate. Thank you for joining. Uh, you're a very reliable viewer, so I appreciate that. Um, so I've got three camera angles set up here. I've got one where I can talk to you. I've got one here where you can see um, sort of the, the big view of, of what I'm doing. And I've got a, uh, another camera set up here where you can see the close-ups. Um, I've uh, got some uh, photo etch here, brass sheets, um, with the little bits and pieces that I need to cut out and fold up. And that's what I'm going to be making into some um, parts of the ship. So uh, let me know if you have any suggestions for how I can improve the stream, if there's anything that you see that uh, isn't working too well uh, or anything you'd like me to, to do more of. Uh, and I shall uh, just get started with the work and I'll explain a little bit of what I'm doing every now and then. But uh, mostly this is going to be a fairly chill stream with a, a little bit of chatting um, and just crafting. So hopefully uh, you might find that interesting as something on the background. So remember, put on some of your own music so that you can uh, chill out while you listen, while you watch. All right, so put on my uh, magnifying glasses, which are very, very helpful. <laughs> they make my eyes look very big, don't they? <laughs> All right, so I've got a whole bunch of things I need to make. And last time I was building, I built... A few of these. Let me show you what I had. Put some music on for myself. Okay, let's empty these out here. Okay, so we've got a bunch of hatches. Uh, I think we've got five or six of them. A little closer. The space I'm showing you here on the zoom in is very small. It's only five centimeters across, so um, that's what I'll need though, in order to be able to show you the, the size of the things that I'm working on. Um, the little grid you can see here, they are one centimeter, 10 millimeters each. And I've got that little red X there so that I can see where, uh, where the camera is pointing. I've got that centered. Um, 222 millimeters long, so 1 350th scale is crazy small. Um, yes. <laughs> Uh, 222 meters. Oh, sorry. Yes, that's the whole length of the ship. So um, on this scale, um, two meters is around about five millimeters. So on here, you can see this. That's a half a centimeter. That's all across there. That, that span is about uh, five millimeters, which makes that about two meters. So this hatch here is, let's see about three meters long. Um, we've also got a, I believe these are called a capstan. This is um, a winch used for bringing up uh, the, uh, the anchor that goes on the front of the ship. Um, a couple of bits and pieces here that uh, I either knocked off and want to put back on later or can't put on until I need to paint them. Uh, there's another hatch there. Um, and this here is one of the hardest parts in the whole ship to make. That is a um, triple barrel 
25 millimeter anti-aircraft cannon and in each of these from memory there's about 16 parts and um, just a reminder of the scale of this there's my finger so um, there's the best focus for that around there so yeah you can see that's uh, really very very small I'm not going to be uh, working on any of those tonight um, and here's a single gun in placement. The other one was a triple barrel. This is a single barrel. Um, so I've got to make, I think it's 18 of these triple barrels. Uh, I think maybe 30 of these single barrels. And I think there's six double barrel ones as well. So uh, I'm just going to keep all them together in uh, this little paper cup. And that keeps things from getting lost because these size things are very very easy to get lost can be delicate handling them so I don't accidentally bend anything or knock any pieces off uh, this piece here this is um, one of the seats for the uh, anti-aircraft emplacement so you fold that up the back up there a little bit and um, that's where the the gunner would have sat so um, that one I accidentally cut off an extra uh, but I will need more later on so I'm, I'm keeping it aside so I don't lose it oh, it's hard to pick these up when they're so small uh, puts your war hammer battle tech and even flame of war mini to shame <laughs> well I wouldn't say shame it's not a competition they're all unique and challenging in their own ways um but yeah i i, I had to enjoy ships didn't i uh, <laughs> i think um ship building is one of the more, more challenging of the uh the miniature building pursuits even amongst other um war vehicles like tanks and aircraft um mostly because of the, the um large quantity of photo which that i need to work with which is um taking these little bits and pieces and then folding them up. So th those hatches I showed you before, this is what they look like when they're on the fret still. So that is a box. So I fold down these four tabs and this is a lid that I glue on one side of that and prop part way up. And you can see here these tiny little um, grids across there. They are about the size of, um, well, a hair really, a human hair. Ah, uh, Al. Oh, no, no, it's not Spaceman Al, but I know who you are. It's good, great to see you. I'm glad I was able to do a stream tonight and you could come along. Uh, it's been a long time. Good to see you again. All right, what should I work on? I reckon I might start with something a bit simple and straightforward because I'm streaming this for the first time. And streamer brain is infamous. Any streamer will tell you that it's uh, you become a bit dumber when you stream because you're focusing on lots of different things at once. So I'm going to build a couple of ammo boxes. They're really straightforward. So these are all the um, the parts for the um, photo etch. There's about 15 sheets of photo etch, I think, maybe 10, something like that. Um, there's ammo boxes. Um, and there's a whole bunch of other smaller pieces, um, resin pieces, uh, ship's chain, more resin, hundreds of tiny, tiny gun barrels. Um, these are all for the anti-aircraft. Um, some larger turned brass, the various posts. Uh, you can see a, a cap stand in there. Everything's reversed because it's upside down from my point of view. Um, some uh, bollards uh, and these ones here that are grooved you can see they are rope uh, so they go in the um, the deck winches and they're meant to look like rope wound onto the winch so yeah lots of little bits and pieces to do even got some um, tiny little uh, life rings there and they are actually small rubber bands so I'm guessing they were um, made for some other use and repurposed for this because it's correct to scale so i've got out the sheets with the 
with the um, ammo boxes on. Where did I put the shit? It just came out. I like to keep everything in its spot because as you can imagine, with things that size, it's pretty easy to accidentally misplace them. And when you misplace something like that, it's very, very difficult to find it again. All right, so I will be assembling this with um, super glue, cyanoacrylate. Uh, I use a couple of different types of glue for that. I've got some extra thick. Focus. So that's um, it's used for coral fragging, which is another uh, hobby I used to do, um, building marine aquarium tanks. Um, and uh, you'd go, you'd have people who would collect coral in the wild, um, licensed to do so, and they'd snap off little bits of it from the larger piece they brought back, and you'd glue it onto these little um, ceramic discs with super glue, uh, and we then glue those discs into your tank, and the coral would grow from there. Craggle. <laughs> it is Craggle. Uh, I'm pretty sure craft glue would be the same as super glue, so yes. Um, but yeah, this is good because it's extra thick, and that means it has um, a fairly good working time, and it means it'll hold stuff in place just long enough that I can then use this, which is the uh, extra thin super glue. And this stuff um, uses capillary action uh, to flow into all the joints. And that makes it a, a really strong bind, bound, it makes it really strongly bound so it doesn't come apart so easily. Um, I've got a, a, a ceramic tile here and I use that for putting little dobs of glue on. Uh, and because it's ceramic, it doesn't absorb the glue, and so the glue stays um, wet longer. So I've got more time to work with it. And a little candle here I use for burning the excess glue off the applicator I use. So that's actually a good example to show you here. So this is uh, a little piece of photo etched metal that has a tiny little fork at the tip here and uh, a hole at the end, you can see the hole there. And that is, uh, it used, used to hold the a little tiny, tiny amount of super glue so that um, I can then touch this onto the object I'm, I'm cementing and the glue will then flow from that. But as you can see, it clogs up with glue and I didn't clean this off from last time. Now let's see if I can do this on camera. Um, let me focus that. There we go. So I just put this in the flame and you can see that burns right off. And now if I show you here again, you can see that's all clean now. No more super glue. Um, the, the gap in the, the two prongs at the front there is probably a little bit too close together. I won't absorb much glue like that. So I'm just going to use my scalpel to just spread that open just a little bit there we go that's a bit better so I'll be able to absorb a bit of glue with that now um, coral looks great we have it in the tank oh fantastic you have a reef tank too that's amazing yeah I had a, a reef tank for a, a few years until unfortunately had an accident or well, not an accident something happened to it I don't know exactly what and uh, it, it all died overnight it crashed um, so unfortunately, very expensive to go back and restock it, and um, we just decided that, that uh, we'd had enough <laughs> enough stress. Uh, it's cool. Thank you very much. I, I'm glad you like it. Um, so I've just put a little dab of the glue onto the tile, and I think I'll get another tile that's um, a different color because this black, it's actually got speckled stuff in it. I found this tile in hard rubbish once, and the speckled stuff makes it very hard to see where you put the dob, dob of glue all right let's uh let's cut off one of these ammo um boxes and start putting it together so there's little gates that hold them in place uh, i'll explain how these photo etched sheets are made in a minute but i need to concentrate on this first now, I'm going to put my finger on there because it's very easy for these things to just fly away. Okay, so 
I'll turn that over. And you can see it's got some fold lines already in that. That makes it a little bit easier to do. And I might, rather than my fat finger, I'll use uh, pliers to, well, tweezers to help with that. Now, actually, I'll just make sure this is perfectly flush because uh, when you cut those little gates off, it can actually leave a tiny little burr and that can get in the way of folding them. Um, you might be able to see one, uh, where is it? Just here, just on the end. Uh, it doesn't really show up on camera. Th this is even small for the small thing, but it can get in the way sometimes. So just give it a, a little file. I'm trying to do this from an angle where you can see it. Now, that looks like that might be all of them. Alright, now to fold. So, fold up the lid. Fold up the back wall. Not all the way though, because I'm going to need room to manoeuvre inside there. Fold up the side wall. The other side wall. That can be a little tricky to get under there sometimes. Because I've got to hold it down, but also get under it. And fold up the front. Now this is going to be a little bit harder. There we go. Okay, so I think I can do this with tweezers now. Just need to try to hold this so you can see it. I just need to squeeze it all in so it's all roughly the correct shape. And before I put the lid down, because I won't be able to do this after I've bent it closed, I'm going to put a little dab of glue inside on this these two corners. Uh, the reason why I want to do that first is because if I can glue it on the inside then the glue won't be visible from the outside and I know on something this small it probably won't really be visible but I'm of the opinion that if you do everything carefully then the things that are seen will be good so rather than do something you know half-assed and not and miss something that you think was okay that wouldn't show but ended up showing um, that's you know that, that's a problem so I would rather do it well to start with um, now instead of the the applicator here this is more for the runny glue for the thicker glue I'm going to use just a, a sewing needle held in a pin vise uh, pin vise there you can see it's just a sort of a handheld uh, drill with a, a vise grip at the front that you can change the drill bits out and I'm using a uh, just a, a, a darning needle. All right, so we put the tiniest drop of glue on that. Got to make sure I get a good hold of it. These things are very springy, so it's easy for them to go flying. And just dab that little bit of glue on the inside there. A little bit more on the other side spread it across now we can fold the back up like that and for this one for the back pieces I'm going to use the super glue the thin super glue on that because it doesn't generally leave as much visible residue, but it's hard to maneuver inside spaces because um, the tip of this is wider than the tip of this. Um, so I need to put some of that glue out. So I'm just gonna put some on the tile. And this really is super thin, it's like water. Alright, don't know if you can see there, but there's a tiny little 
drop of it in the middle. And then if I hold this, I could just touch it to the edge there. Sometimes it doesn't break the surface tension. There we go. And that's flowed in into that join there. All right, and now the other side. Getting a bit of a uh, super glue on my utensils, so I'll just burn them off. It's hard to remember which side I did. Okay, that's the side I've yet to do. Need two pairs of tweezers for this, so I can maneuver them around how I need. There we go. Just squeeze that in a little bit more. All right. There's a little bit of a, a a bead of super glue on there. I probably used a little too much. So rather than let it just be a lump, I'm just spreading it out a little bit, and it won't really be too visible. Now I think for this ammo box, I might actually leave it open. Which means that is my first object for the day done. And I need to do about maybe 30 or 40 of those. <laughs> um, how is the audio? Uh, I've got a, a lavalier mic up here and I'm worried that every time I'm bending over, it's getting muffled. Um, I can't use the mic that I've got on my uh, other stand because, well, it's on my other stand. And I'm just noticing it's clipping a little. All right, let me drop that down a bit. Hopefully that'll sound a bit better. Maybe down there, testing one, two. Okay, that, the uh, levels look a bit better there now. All right. Audio, good as far as you can tell. Fantastic, thank you. Oh, I just reached across using the mouse and put my arm in the, uh, the glue. <laughs> I couldn't count the number of times I've done that. Fortunately, I didn't absorb it all up. I just got to live with that for a little bit until I can scratch it all off. All right, let's do another box. Now, I won't explain every step through this one so I can do it a little bit faster. Try and cut these as close as I can to the edge of the metal so I don't have to file the burr off. Right, let's just run my finger along, see if I can feel it. Yeah, I can feel a little bit there. All right. Sorry if um, this isn't always visible in the close-up camera. It's a little hard to see where I'm looking when I've got the, uh, when I'm up in close, but that's why I've got the wider angles as well. So even if you can't see up close, you can sort of see I'm doing something. Right, we'll start with the top, not all the way, then the back. These sides are a little tricky to get under. There we go. It's really about maneuvering things precisely as as, much, as precisely as you can manage. Which can be tricky. Yeah, the first lot of super glue's already dried up. Actually, I might see if I can reach in there with the ultra thin because that actually surprisingly it dries super fast on the um, on the brass parts, 
but it doesn't dry so fast when it's on the, the ceramic tile. Yeah, I think that worked. Yep, all right, I'll do it with this then. I feel a little bit sometimes when I'm dabbing the super glue, like I'm dipping uh, my pen in an inkwell. glue to the uh, to the tweezers and that pulled it apart come on that's the angle I wanted squeeze that closed a little bit I think I'll glue this one closed. So you can see there's a bit of springiness there. So I will hold it closed. Get some more glue on my applicator and just let it spring open a little. Pop that in and then close it and hopefully that will glue it closed Oop, not quite hold it for a few seconds no okay didn't get enough glue in there uh, if you've got any questions just sing out in the chat and I'll answer them the best I can um, I mentioned that I'm not playing music so that you can all listen to your own music um, what are you listening to tonight, folks? Alright, there we go. Got a finished ammo box there. Just reminding you the size of these things. <laughs> Let's do a couple more of these and then I'll move on to something different just to show you what else I... I have to work on. <clears throat> you have Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness on in the background. Ah, nice. I haven't seen that one yet. Um, I watched all my the marvel stuff that i watched on um disney plus and the last couple of movies haven't or hadn't come out when i was watching them and i think the next one i've yet to see is the um the second and third new spider-man movies and i think the uh, multiverse comes out in the timeline it's set later than those so I haven't gotten around to watching it yet Oh, Jesus, this is hard to hold sometimes when the tweezers don't want to hold it properly. They It pivots inside the tweezers. As for me, I'm listening to a Google or YouTube music suggested playlist um, of anime stuff or Japanese pop stuff, which is a, a frequent um, part of my rotation. Okay, that's the front folded up. Mm. 
Yeah, um, after Spy Model versus after the No Way Home. What was the one before No Way Home? Is that because um, I've seen up to End Game. End Game is where I stopped watching in the timeline. So I thought there was maybe two Spider Man movies after that. Spider Man, Spider Man. Spider-Man Far From Home. That's it. Oh, Far From Home and No Way Home. I keep getting those mixed up and it's... No wonder why. The glue's not... Taking... There we go. I couldn't get enough on there. Just stuck it to the tweezers. There we go. The glue on the tweezers I'll have to burn off. It's like trying to manipulate rice using telephone poles as chopsticks. there I can just spread out okay I think I got that one now the other side Wakanda Forever dropped on Disney Plus last week. Ah, oh, okay, cool. I'll check that out. Alright, time for the lid to go down. I love how much detail you get on these tiny little um, photo etch parts. You can sort of see the panelling they put on the, the lid there. But can you even see this tiny little latch down the front middle that is something you could never get in a plastic model and on something like a model ship where scale is so important having those tiny little details in my opinion it really adds to it just spread these apart again a little bit just using it they end up getting bumped in a little bit yeah, this uh, super thin is really lasting well on the tile. Put a little on the side as well. Okay, that's another one. One more.
just a couple of light strokes is all it takes to get rid of the burrs. Actually, I've got a finer file that might be a bit better for that. Uh, this one's a uh, equivalent to a 600 grit. Uh, it's a diamond file, which means that as long as I keep it clean of gunk, it should never go dull. Hopefully. And it's also nice and fine too, so I can get right in to some of the narrow spots, which is great. It's a lot like origami, I guess. The folds aren't quite as complex, but um, the size makes it challenging. The quantities of glue I'm using are so small that it's very easy to go too far with it. A little bit of soot builds up on the applicator over time because I'm constantly cleaning it in the fire, in the, the candle. And the soot, I think... Um, it repels the, the glue a little bit, so I've got to keep cleaning that. I might leave this one open too, so I've got a couple of each. Oh, come on over the front and on the side come on there we go this is very fiddly stuff And that's done, since I'm leaving the lid open on that one. All right, let's have a look at the deck plan. I'm going to put that straight in here so I don't accidentally catch my sleeve or something on it and rip it apart. So we've got a deck plan here that came with the, um, the photo etch extra parts. And that shows all the different extra pieces that need to go on. So uh, you can see all these, um, I think they're called mushroom vents. Basically the vents that come up and have a round dome on top. They are all separate single parts. Um, so I just glue them on when I've painted them. So what I'm looking for is bits that I've yet to assemble that's are made up of multiple parts. Okay, so I've done this capstan. I haven't done these electric cable holders. Let me turn it around so you can see. So uh, here, is that uh, there, electric cable holder. So you can see I've got um, one, two, three, four parts in each, and they're 
this is a turned part. So brass 22A, and then stack on top of that 563, 562, and 561. So they all go on the top here. So first I need to find brass 22A. And that is in the box of extras. Um, this is the box that the, uh, the detail kit came in. So we find the bag that's got the turned brass. There's a couple. I think those are the only two. So it was 22A. So I'm going to look down my list here 22A and brake wheel. So we're looking at this part here. And this is a single turned brass part but it contains two parts for the kit, one in black, one in red. And you can see they uh, they do that often. So you've got, uh, this is one piece and this is a separate part, but they're all on the same turned um, rod. I would love to see what those brass turners look like, what the lathe looks like. It would be incredibly small. All right, so, it's got a fairly big indent in it, so let's look for a part like that. No, it doesn't look like any of those. No, that's too big, I think. Although these are to scale on here, so that helps you can sort of put them on top and see. And no, that is definitely too big. Um, it's not that one either. So I must have overlooked a bag. Oops, that bag of resin parts came open. Let's put that back in. Is that it? Yep. Alright, put that aside so I don't overlook them again. So this bag is just barrels. This bag is just resin. This bag is barrels, I think, just barrels. Nothing as big as the, the winch that I'm looking for. So maybe it's under these. Here we go. Yeah, that's the only bag left, so it's gonna be in there. screen uh, there's a lot of pieces in this bag let's spread them out a little bit aha uh -huh. that looks like it might be it so let's open up now there's two of these I need to make Um, I should probably make it clear that this upgrade kit is not the default parts. It's not what comes in the kit. It was an extra kit that cost even more than the original plastic kit, actually. Because um, there's so much work in, involved in making these. Yep, that, that's, a, that's a fit. So that's the piece I need. So I need to cut that off there. Yeah, forgive me for hiding it, but I do not want the smaller piece to go flying. That's going straight back in the bag. And I won't get the other one out until I've made this one. Put that aside for now. 
so the other parts we needed, actually let me just check first if this needs a file. It probably won't because it's going in the hull, but I'm just going to give it a little once over just to keep it clean. So we need five six one through six three. So which sheet is that on? Can I just put that aside? Oh, I don't think it's on this sheet. Six ninety six eighty nine. Yep, it's before that one. This sheet is 597. Ah, uh, there we go. This is it. That does look like a good, good candidate. Yes, thank you. You, you, uh, you need to double check because if you put the wrong piece on, then when you come to need the piece that it was meant to be, you won't know where it is. I have done that once or twice. All right, so. 561 is the larger piece, and they're all circular pieces. All right, I'm going to turn it around my way so that I can read the numbers. 561, 562, and 563. All right, I'm going to cut these off one at a time because they're small enough that they could easily get misplaced oops out of the view of the camera there sorry about that okay let's see a little bit of a burr just a couple of strokes of the file is all it takes is our first piece and it goes on top of this so it goes on there like that all right That might be best actually with a tiny daub of thick CA glue spread around. The problem with a thin CA glue is that if you put it kind of in the wrong spot, it's um, it spreads a lot. The thick CA though dries very quickly on the tile, so I don't want to get it out before I really need it. With the uh, this one, where'd that go? I've got it now. Needs a bit of a burn. All right, let's see if we can do this where you can see it. I think I might need to hold this one with other tweezers. There we go. It'll be more than enough to hold it. Got to turn it over first. There we go. Ah, flips all over the place. Come on, turn over, damn you. There we go. Ah. Got it. All 
Okay, that's the first part done. It's a little bit of glue on there, which is probably good. That'll be enough for the uh, the next piece. But I'm going to put a little bit more on. And just put that aside. When we get to the next one. Just double check, it's 562, and that's 562 there. These pieces are getting smaller and smaller. I don't think that needs any filing. Uh, also doing a little read up of the Congo built by Vickers, that's right. Um, she was the last Japanese warship built in the UK um, back when England and Japan were allies um, 1914 I think it was or 1913 something like that and um, the Japanese used her as a template to build her three sister ships and they were Haruna Kashima and Hie. And they all pretty much ended up with a, a pretty sad fate, as is the way with most of the sh Japanese ships in World War Two. I think uh, Kirishima was the only one to survive the war, but as the um, as part of the surrender terms, she was scuttled. All right, and five six three. Look at those tiny little rivet marks on there. That's something you just cannot get in plastic. I mean, look at that on my fingertip. <laughs> 1913. Interesting to note that Vickers got the contract due to bribing Siemens. I didn't know that. <laughs> or out bribing, I should say, Siemens, you said. Now, is there enough glue on the top of that? Probably not. the wrong way up there we go uh, and there we go one of the cable winches all right we'll put that aside now in our little paper cup and I'll do the next one Siemens tried to bribe a Japanese admiral and Vickers outbid the bribe. <laughs> uh, there's always a way when it comes to government and war and anywhere that you can make money. Uh, where are we? There we go. That's the one. Give it a little flat file. Became a big scandal when it was found out. The Admiral had to pay a decent fine and got three years in jail. Wow, the Japanese Prime Minister resigned. Who knows how history could have gone if uh, Vickers had built it instead. It probably would have ended up being a fairly similar ship because they would have had... Um, specs to build to and of course that wouldn't have changed the outcome of the war at all so probably not a big difference in the grand scheme of things but i guess vickers got a bit more money out of it 
as much as I love the design and the aesthetics of warships, I really hate war. So it doesn't really excite me to, you know, to learn that Siemens did well out of it or did poorly out of it and Vickers did well out of it. I don't care. They can both sink to the bottom of the sea. Okay, that, uh, that um, super thick is starting to dry a little bit. Should be enough to hold it. Oh wow, that went on easy by comparison to the others. Five six These are going on or being picked up a lot easier this time. Looks like it's going on pretty clean. On that scale, you probably won't notice any of the glue once the paint goes on. Alright, five, six, three. This last little bit of uh, ultra or super thick will probably be enough to finish this piece off. See if I can make it a hat trick and pick this one up cleanly. Yes. Ah, that's nice when it comes together like that. Done. Uh, I study such things in the hope that we will never see another such conflict. That Putin is doing is just dangerous to spoil word police. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Um, on that topic, um, if you haven't already uh, become aware of him, there is a uh, an Australian YouTuber called Perun, P-E-R-U-N, who um, he doesn't say what he does because it's uh, military-related, but he has an encyclopedic knowledge of uh, military logistics. And he's been doing a series of deep dives, uh, analyzing the Ukrainian war. And more than any other source, he has provided me with uh, incredible insight and understanding as to what's really going on in Ukraine. So if that interests you, if the logistics of warfare and the, the current um, progress in Ukraine is of interest to you, Go check out Perun, P-E-R-U-N, uh, on YouTube. All right, what should we build next? All right, I am going to leave the flight deck until a bit later. Um, you'll see that I've got this masked in places. Um, after putting it all together, I noticed that there was some um, gaps that I needed to fill. So that been filled and sanded now, and I've mastered off uh, in preparation to to paint that. There's a few other bits and pieces around here, um, so I'm not painting that yet. So I don't want to touch anything that will be 
uh, going underneath the painted spots. So, uh, what shall I do then? I've done one, two, three, four, five. I've done five of these. Um, let me show you. Those are the the little I forget what you call these things vents that I showed you early earlier. So oh, I'll show you on the right spot uh, here. You can see they're the right scale there. Fits just nicely. So how many are there to do? One, two. Three, four, five, ah, six and seven. So I'll do a couple more of those. Um, what numbers are they? Six, two, six, and six, two, three. Oh, sorry, 625 and 626 or 626 and 624. So I guess I've got a choice. They're probably an open versus a closed. So where are they? Six O, six two. They're on the next fret. Six two six. That's four hundreds, two hundreds, one hundreds, seven hundreds, seven hundred and one. That doesn't seem right unless it doesn't end. The numbers at the bottom right corner ah six two seven that's the spot they uh number these wherever they can fit rather than necessarily in the correct order although they generally do from go from top left to bottom right so six two six six two eight six two six and we've got a choice between 625 and 624. So there's 625. I'll put this where you can see. 626, 625, and we're 624. I'm betting it's those ones, but it hasn't been numbered. Uh, 27, 29, 26, 2, 3, 6. Yep, I don't see 6, 2, 4 anywhere. And these two are right next to each other and they both go on that. So I'm guessing that's... Oh, I didn't see it. There's the number there, 6, 2, 4. Very hard to see. All right, so all the other ones I've done have been using closed hatches. So I'll do these two with open, open portals. All right. Now I'm going to be very, very gentle with these because these little struts here, as I said, they're about the thickness of a hair. So just brushing them with the scalpel could potentially break them or bend them out of shape. So I'm going to be very, very careful. Now, is there a, an outside versus inside? No, they're the same in both sides. Um, you can see here, we've got like three little tabs, or three little, I'm not sure what you call them, but on the other side, ah, there I go, I stuck my, oh, I just broke it. <laughs> no, I just bent it, okay, that'll be all right. If I flip it over, you can see they're not cut all the way through or part way through they're just flush but on the reverse side you can see they're cut in that means you fold up here it gives you room to fold it up 
I, I might try holding it down with with the file because it's a broad flat surface there I think I'll do those three sides first. The uh, longer side would be harder to bend without having that file there to hold it down. It doesn't quite want to fold up completely. This corner here is open a bit. Okay, I think that's close enough. Alright, need some more ultra thin. There we go. That went in quite nicely. Okay, that's two done. Have I glued it to the thing? I have, haven't I? There we go. This is very tricky to fold that up. I need to hold this down, but I've got very little space to hold it. Maybe I can put this right in the corner there there we go all right that looks good all right i think that's in the correct shape now did that go in I'll just put a little bit more to be sure got it and now the other side it can be hard to break that surface tension sometimes but there we go that's done all right that is the vent itself now to put on the hood. Now this will be a little bit tricky because um, this is only going to be glued to one along one edge because it's going to be open. I think I might use the extra thick for that because the uh, ultra thin doesn't really provide anything structural while it's drying. Okay, so we are going to put this on.
like this there so I'm just gonna run this piece through the glue I'm gonna have to turn this around so I can get the angle right for my hand and then it'll just pick up enough glue just from surface tension I'm not sure if you can see any glue on there or not um, and I can just touch it on here uh -huh, there we go and now to lift it up sticking to my tweezers haven't got a lot of working time uh, maybe I didn't pick up enough glue on that one all right in that case I'm gonna put a dab of super thick on with the, uh, the needle onto the, the vent and then I'll put the hood on top of that yeah it's got a nice little bead of glue on there I'm not sure if you can see The back of my hand actually makes a pretty good turning surface to put the parts on if I want to put them on the hold them from the other direction because the skin's soft I can push into it a little bit and reach underneath the part with the tweezers oh this is so fiddly all right just hold that there now I'm just going to use a bit of a, a zip kicker. This is a accelerator. Stinks, but spray of that will fix it. It'll instantly cure the glue. So while it was in the right position, oh, while it was in the right position, it uh, holds it fast. Now it, it evaporates very quickly, so you can see the. Um, the liquid still on the surface there but we've now got our completed little vent with the hood or the the lid up and now to do another one we just touch that to the desk to get rid of any excess and that's almost gone now all right I'll do one more of these and then I think I'll, I'll call it for a night um, I was only just intending to test things out here, but we've been streaming for how long? Ah, oh, just over an hour. Excellent. Um, this is all going to help towards um, getting me to affiliate on this account as well. Um, I've got all the other requirements met. I just need to stream seven times within 30 days, which I had done in the past, but it has to be within the last um, calendar month, the last 30 days. So once I've done my seventh stream, I should hopefully be given affiliate, which means I can start putting emotes and other cool things in the, uh, in the chat for you guys to play with. All right, does it need any more filing? Maybe a little on this side. Is that Ike in the background? Yes, it is. <laughs> He's uh, down here begging for food. He, he can't quite jump up onto this table. He's, um, oh, you know, can't, probably can't see him. Hang on. Oh, I've got that all connected. He was down here. Come on. Come on. 
There we go. <laughs> oh, he doesn't like the smell of that accelerator. <laughs> um, yeah, he can't jump up on this table because he's getting a bit old. Poor boy. So he has to um, sort of push himself up against my chair and try to get my attention that way. That's two of three, sorry, three of four. That could come a bit closer in that corner. Okay, I think that's good. Now I'll just close that, hold that closed with a little bit of pressure. Oops. Very easy to drop these. Okay, I put a little bit of super, super thin on each side there. Final piece, the final fold. Yep, that looks pretty good. It's getting a bit thick now. The uh, capillary action isn't working so much now. That's okay though. That's the last super thin that I'll be using. Uh, it's left a little bit of a lump now because it's hardened. I wonder if I can file that without damaging it. Okay, not now. Lumps tend to uh, become more visible when the paint's on because it's a smooth surface with the paint and the lumps just cast shadows. <sighs> that feels pretty smooth. Good enough. All right. There's a little bit of schmutz on there. I'm not sure what that is. <sighs> I got it. All right, now to get the hood. And last little bit of glue.
tricky, tricky. Got to turn it around the right way because there's three hinges on one side and a clasp on the other. Don't tell me that dried already. It did. Bloody hell. This is um, what happens when the when the glue's been sitting out for a while. It gets extra thick and it sits there but like it dries quicker. So for this one last tiny bit of glue, I'm going to have to get some fresh uh glue out to to do this uh, this is always so delicate getting rid of glue is hard especially when i'm working around those really fine details what about the back? There's a little bit of a lump on there. Good enough. I'm aware that every time I touch this, there's a chance that I'll accidentally damage it so I'm only going to do the absolute minimum necessary to make sure that it's clean enough for my for my liking just cleaning a bit of extra glue off that the uh, flame wouldn't burn get a little bit of fresh glue just the tiniest dab let's try that again Now I can't see where I put it. There we go. Now which side is this? So we've got one, two, three hinges and a clasp there. So it needs to go this way. I might do it around here like this, a little bit easier to hold on that angle. I'm using the other tweezers to steady my hand. Is that dried already again? It has. What about just dipping it in? Come on. Okay. Um, is that position right? Uh, that's good enough, I think. Just a little. All right, and some accelerator. All right, and that should be done. Oh, that stuff really stinks. All right, so today we got two of these two of these and four of these done I might as well get them out to 
show what we've done. Where did the other one go? There it is. So, uh, not a lot, <laughs> but this takes a long time. That's why these um, ships take forever to build. Um, not bad for an hour's work. Um, you've been asked to clean off the bed, hopefully back soon. Uh, well, um, you can watch the, the VOD later, but I, I'm going to finish off now because I do need to give Archie a little bit of a snack and it's getting late, so I want to get to bed too. But um, I hope you enjoyed watching this first crafting stream. Uh, there will definitely be more. Great work, especially at that scale. Thank you. Yes, it, it is very, very fiddly, um, as you saw. So uh, patience and taking your time really helps get the best quality results. I'm pleased with how the, uh, the tops of these look, for example. Um, but yeah, it's worth it in the end because when it's done, the ship will so, show so much detail that unless you've got a trained eye, you could look and look and look and still see more detail. So I'm pretty satisfied with that. All right, we'll call it a, a night there. Um, thank you for coming and um, look forward to hopefully seeing you in a future stream. Good night.